Hello everyone, welcome back to another Wealth Wednesday where I help you rise into more worthiness and wealth. And in this episode, I have a very special guest. So we have the whole family here. So it's going to be either little Alex or Lindsay. I picked Alex, he picked Lindsay as the girl's name. We're gonna find out in about a month, but I wanted to bring my husband Eric on today because as most of you know, I have an upcoming Pivot to Profit three-day workshop that is going to help you strategically call in consistent clients and cash flow for your business. And Eric and I always have these conversations in the morning and one of them was around this, this topic of pivoting to profit. And I wanted to bring him on today to number one, mix up Wealth Wednesday so that you're not just seeing my face, you get another person's perspective, but also because it was such a great conversation and it's something that we're gonna be extracting some of these concepts so you can use them in your business. So if you are, just a little shameless plug here, if you are watching the recording of this Wealth Wednesday after the Pivot to Profit three-day workshop, you can still click on the link in the description box and grab the replay. So just wanted to let you know that too. But without further ado, I wanted to introduce my husband, Eric. So Hi. Tell them about uh, some of the things that you do. So some of the things that I do with my restaurant, Gems of Pittsburgh, is I visit local restaurants and I actually showcase them. So if you've ever seen diners, drive-ins and dives. Um, I actually do that and showcase the restaurant, the ambiance, go behind the scenes with the food and really give a big picture of their actual restaurant and promote them. How many restaurants have you visited in Pittsburgh? Over 150. Yeah. So Eric is also an author. So collectively we have, I think, seven books. <laughs> so we've birthed many books together. Um, I've, I've actually helped with some of it, but you know, I'll give him all the credit for uh, constructing his first book. And Eric has visited so many different restaurants. We're both business owners. And so what we're gonna talk about today is actually where we first met at the coffee shop that has now since expanded tremendously. So I wanted to bring this concept to you because we were talking on the couch the other day about how this coffee shop, it's called Generosta, and you know has has thrived ever since the pandemic they pivoted we're going to go through some of what they did and now they're booming and they have all of these different things where there was another i don't know if you know depending on where you live in the country we have something called clean juice where they have a lot of smoothies and like healthy foods but they actually closed their doors and so we started talking the other day and i said well why do you think clean juice closed and why did generosa stay open and, and I think it's because they pivoted. So let's talk about some of the, like, well, first of all, I guess we should tell people about our five hour coffee date at Generosa, so go ahead. Yes, we actually met on Bumble and we had a five hour literal coffee date from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Generosa. And they closed the doors at two and we actually sat outside for another hour and both of our parents thought, is everything okay? Like what, what's wrong with our children? We haven't heard from them. Yeah. And it turns out our date was going that well. We connected that much. Yeah. My mom, my mom was like, are you mad at me? Because I was texting her a lot at that time. And you know, cause I was living alone. I was here in Pittsburgh and she was worried about me. You know, they live in Long Island, my family. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm still on this date. And we always joke, like <laughs> he gets so mad. Cause I was talking about how like you were playing footsie. He's like, no, you were playing footsie with me. So it was just a fun first date. Um, we really enjoyed it. And it was just a coffee shop at that time, you know, Generosa. And ever since the pandemic, we started seeing these little changes. So they started adding in the ice cream. And we know when you, whenever you walk in, they have all these different flavors. They have even some dairy-free options. So they went and, and pivoted and turned from a coffee shop uh, and now I think they even have more coffees and then they have an expanded breakfast menu and right. And there's so many workers that work there. They've innovated a lot. And I've found that businesses that innovate or pivot, like they keep going and the ones that don't, a lot of them die. So they have, they went from having just a basic menu to, they have a menu that has like it's kind of like a restaurant. Mm -hmm. They also have ice cream now. They had eight employees behind there. It, they actually have a wine bar now. So you can actually not only get coffee, but you can have wine as well, which, you know, perfect for a first date. They're thinking about, you know, maybe people are nervous or what can we do, but they've really pivoted and expanded their business and invested in it. 
which a lot of places that invest and spend money up front, they see that reward tenfold, you know, on the back end. And I'm even thinking too of, cause Clean Juice was also in a strip, like not a strip mall, but like there were other businesses around it. I'm thinking of locations. My dad always said, oh, location, location, location is the biggest uh, driver of success. But Clean Juice was also in, just like Generosa, because with the coffee shop, there's Off the Hook, there's a lot of different, there's like a hair salon, and there's all these different stores. So both of them are kind of nestled in prime locations, but I think the difference is, number one, Generosa innovated, like you said, now they have a wine, it's called The Vine, so you can go there for a glass of wine, like even before maybe going to uh, Off the Hook or whatever, they sell wine bottles, and I love too how they have, because I'm into all the fall drinks, like that little uh, chalkboard that shows all these different fall drinks and they just really took off. I love too that Generosa, I've gone to events there before and I think this is a big opportunity if you have a physical location is to bring in other business owners who want to maybe do a workshop or something like that. I know I went with Dr. Andrew Roop who is a chiropractor he had an event there years ago and it's such a great idea because you're bringing more people into this coffee shop and who's not going to be like oh i want a skull and i want this i want that so it's kind of capitalizing on like a win-win situation for both the business owner but also the coffee shop so that was another thing that i really liked where i think clean juice I'm, we're going to kind of switch gears now to looking at clean juice and where i think that they fall short is that I think it was kind of like small in there. It was a little bit dark. It wasn't really an, an inviting environment for people to say, come in and do a workshop. I think they also never really changed their menu. Like sometimes they would have a full menu or like a Christmas menu, but they never really pivoted and shifted. So, and then you always talk about like, it, it's not a luxury, but I, like, why do you think people are less likely to go into like a clean juice versus go get a coffee. Well, it's more of a luxury item. Um, it's more expensive. Uh, what What are people like thinking? Like a smoothie, yeah. Exactly. What are people thinking about getting? They're thinking about getting a coffee where a smoothie is more of like a treat, a dessert, and that's all they have. So Generosa has coffee. You can also get something to eat there. You can all, they also have, one, one thing I wanted to bring up that's important um, Generosa also big time innovation. They have cathedral ceilings, they have lighting, they have lounge chairs. They've invested a lot into the floor, the lights. It, people don't think about this, but when you go somewhere, you want to be somewhere you feel comfortable. The more comfortable you are, the more longer you are to stay. Well, and to, it made me think of the fact that like coffee houses have traditionally been places to meet, right? So like there are so many people that I see meeting for business meetings or like I go there to do a lot of my work if I want to just get out of the house. So there's a lot of seating. <clears throat> they have a cute little fire pit in the middle that, you know, you can put on in the winter. There's just all these different elements. They have outdoor seating too. Um, so I just wanted to bring up all of these different elements because I think that whether you have a physical location or an online store, there are different ways that you can innovate or create these different connection points for your clients, even if you have an online business. Like I'm, as an example, I'm always doing workshops or like I have a Facebook group where I'm constantly giving and sharing and nurturing all of the people in there. I think we have about 2,900 people in my Facebook group right now. And I think that it's important that people feel part of something, that it's a community, that it's a cohesive space to come and like Eric was saying, like, feel like you belong or feel like you want to stay there. So I think that that's really important. Another thing that we've talked about too in the past, what was that? Clean Eats. There was another place called Clean Eats. And, you know, I always think about how are these places giving back to the community? So are they helping the local soccer team? You know, like we talk about that a little bit. Exactly. I mean, are they sponsoring local sports? Like, do you see them, um, you know, with different like pictures up of, of the local community, holding events, giving back to the community, things like that. I've learned so much from Christina in business. And she just said that it's so important for a business not to just sell their product, but to be involved in the community and give back. And, you know, that will, you know, drive customers to you and get mm -hmm. you out there and they're just, there's so many levels to a business that before I met Christina, I just had no clue about. 
Yeah, and I think too, being part of like a, a networking event or like a chamber of commerce or something like that, that's again, kind of the same concept of being plugged into your community, networking with other business owners. You guys know I always talk about wealth circulation and you know sharing and allowing people to come into your space and um, creating these win-win situations amongst other business owners. So even like when you're going to a networking event, it's not about what can I get, it's how can I circulate my wealth and knowing that is go it's going to come back and you don't need to know how, it just will because we live in an energetic universe that is always, you know, allowing us to, you know, what we give, we're going to naturally receive and we don't need to know how or when. So I think that all of these are just great concepts to kind of show you different opportunities that you can or, or tweaks that you can make in your business. And like I said, we're really going to be diving deep into this in the Pivot to Profit workshop. So again, if you have not checked that out, if you are watching this after the fact, definitely uh, grab the replay in the description box below. Anything else? Um, I'm trying to think of any other things that I might have missed about... Um, even like something as simple too, I'm just thinking... Uh, allowing people to, or like a community board, that could be another thing that you have, like, say you have a physical location, having a community board is helpful for people too. It's going to make them want to come in. Like I know I just, I have a, an upcoming event with Corey Wamsley. We're doing uh, the show up and shine event, which is an online event for aspiring authors. And I had a flyer that I went and was looking, you know, for different coffee houses. So that's another opportunity again to, open yourself up if you know if you're a, a local business hey come post or you know put something in in the in the door and like tape it to the door I know my dad used to do that all the time my dad had an independent pharmacy and so how can you support other people in the community and again I really feel that when a business is plugged into the community that's when they're going to thrive if they're kind of just this standalone entity then it's not really going to promote and foster those relationships, which really that <laughs> business is all about relationships and connections. And also too, uh, thinking about the mindset of giving, like how can I give? And when you're in that mindset, mindset subconsciously, you'll be receiving it. If you look a lot of the businesses, whether they're sponsoring golf outings or they're doing charity work or whatever the case may be, if you get in that mindset of how can I give, you, you will receive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, giveaways, raffles, I can think of so many different examples that I've even used in my business as well. If you have a Facebook community, like, you know, having people go ahead and like get, leave you a positive review or do like two quick action steps and then you pull a raffle for a free service or a free book or whatever that, I, I could list a thousand different examples. But the whole idea is that wealth circulation, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't listened to some of my earlier videos, definitely go back through. You can click on the playlist of Wealth Wednesdays and you'll see that I talk about this concept constantly. It's so important because again, when we're typically thinking of starting a business or growing a business, we're like, okay, well, where do I get my clients? And we're thinking about that getting where I want you to flip that and, and circulate that wealth first. So volunteer help out, um, you know, offer to do a free workshop, anything that you can do to circulate that wealth first, and it is going to naturally come back to you. So anyway, I think this was a really great uh, Wealth Wednesday video. Do you have any anything else that you want to add? Yes, yeah, um, free content. Christina and I, like we give a ton of free content and Christina especially, and I think like you have to give. So, you know, you do a lot of free content. I highly recommend it. It gets you out there consistent content. You have to be consistent. Yeah. It's one of the biggest things with successful businesses is pe and people is they are consistent. They don't miss. They post weekly. They do X weekly. It, it's so important. Mm -hmm. Like you, um, and, and I think too, seeing opportunities, this, this will be my last point because we could just keep going on and on, but you had, an, uh, you had seen there was that food truck. So Eric saw this opportunity. Tell them about the food truck that you went and you saw that what was it in Beaver, yep. Beaver County? Uh, the Still City Food Truck. Help me out. Yeah, the, it, they've revived it from years ago. 
Oh, the Hill Snack Yeah, yeah, bar. yeah. Hill, yeah, that's what it was. So if anyone grew up in uh, around Pittsburgh or Ohio, you know about Hills. And they had a snack bar. And when you used to go to the store, if you were a child, you used to love to get snacks. They were somewhat inexpensive pretzels, slushies, nachos. A guy actually brought that idea back and created a Hills snack bar food truck. I did some free content for him and he is just blowing it out of the water. People are so excited. It brings back memories. Like when you get creative and you really, you know, get, get like people will buy off you if it's something that makes them help me out here like happy or... mm -hmm. yeah it brings them joy and it fulfills a need that they have well and i the the whole point of that story was like you saw that opportunity you didn't get paid for it but you were like hey i want to go position myself to cover this food truck um you know and, and do a free article for them because you know it's it, there was a, there were a ton of people there right Yes, so. e exactly. And pivoting off that, here's another example of an opportunity. I go to Henry's Meat Market. It just opened at Cranberry. Get Penny, our little dachshund uh, jerky, and get us meats and <laughs> things like that. The cashier goes, aren't you that food guy? And I said, yes. And she goes, oh, I follow your stuff, and it's great and all that. Well, I'm thinking about doing free content for them. I mean, that is a big place that's getting all kinds of business, but like you have to constantly be thinking like Christina and I are working on our business 24 seven. Like there's always an idea we're thinking about. Yeah. And so it's, it's proximity too. That would be like the, like pivot to profit. Proximity is big too. Like, you know, being like, you knew that, that Hills was going to have a lot of coverage, right? So like you positioned yourself there, you know, and who knows what could happen, you know, you just never know. Um, but you did some something nice, you created that content and you did it for free. And then the same thing with this Henry's, which just opened recently. So there's so many things, we, like I said, we could keep going on and on. Um, obviously we had a really great coffee conversation and we'd love to hear in the comments, let me know what resonated most for you. Do you have other businesses in your area that you've either seen thriving or maybe have shut down? And you can kind of see maybe why based upon some of the concepts we talked about. We want to hear from you. So let us know. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being my amazing guest here, yes, Eric. Absolutely. And Anytime. We'll, yeah, we'll see you on the next Wealth Wednesday.